Hi, I'm Sylvan Kaufman, and I'm here at Atkins Arboretum in Ridgely, Maryland. I'm at their native plant nursery, where they have a lovely specimen of the service berry, Amelanchier, which you can see right here behind me. And that's what I want to introduce you to today. There are numerous species of amelanchiers, and they can be difficult to tell apart in the field because they hybridize, sometimes they reproduce asexually, and different individuals may have multiple copies of chromosomes in their cells, called polyploidy, or have an excess or deficiency of a chromosome, called aneuploidy. All of this leads to taxonomic confusion. At least the genus name hasn't changed. The name amelanchier may be derived from the French common name for the European species. The common names for North American amelanchiers include shadbush and shadblow because the trees flower around the same time that the shads start to run upriver. The name sarvus or serviceberry seems to come from the fruit's similarity in appearance to sorbus fruits. But I learned that it was called serviceberry because it flowered when the ground thawed enough to bury those who died in winter or that the roads became passable enough to get to church services. It's also called Juneberry for when the fruits ripen, and Sugar Pear or Indian Pear for the fruits. The fruits are the size of a large blueberry and are quickly eaten by birds, bears, and raccoons, among other animals. The tastiness to people varies among species of amelanchier, but they've long been used fresh and dried to make everything from bread to jam to pies and puddings. Technically, the fruit is a poem, like an apple or a pear, with the seeds enclosed in a central capsule. The fleshy part of the fruit is the hypanthium, formed from the seeds and petals, or perianth of the flower. The core is formed from the ovary and consists of the exocarp, mesocarp, and endocarp. Generally speaking, amelanchiers grow as shrubs or small trees, although amelanchier arborea and alevis can reach more than 40 feet in height. Naturalist Donald Colross Petey says that the wood of Amelanchier lavis ranks with that of persimmon as the heaviest in our northern silva, or indeed in the United States outside the tropics. It's the fifth hardest of all our woods and it takes a beautiful polish so that it would be a more valuable cabinet wood than white oak if only the trees grew large enough for lumbering. But that is like wishing a nymph of the forest might do duty as a sturdy farm wife. Amelanchiers have oblong to oval leaves with serrated, tooth-like-a-saw edges. The leaves are arranged alternately along the stems. The twigs are gray to reddish-brown with a few scattered lenticels, the little gray dots along the twig. The buds can be up to half an inch long with a few scales. On many species, the buds have some hairs and open into hairy leaves. Often the leaves become hairless with age, but it depends on the species. One of the first trees to flower in spring, look for its delicate clusters of white flowers. Here in Maryland, it begins to bloom in late March. The flowers come out before the leaves or with the leaves still folded at flowering. The flowers attract different bee species and butterflies to pollinate them. Amelanchiers usually have clusters of flowers at the ends of each little twig, and each individual flower has five strappy petals. These will turn into a little cluster of fruits. It blooms at about the same time, or maybe just after, the dreaded calorie pear, an introduced invasive species with bright white flowers that smell bad. Calorie pear is considered an invasive species as it has rapidly spread from cultivation along roadsides and forest edges. Calorie pears in the same family as the amelanchier, the rose family, and you can see it has five petals, but the petals are much more rounded, and they're much bold, there's a much bolder cluster of flowers than the surface berry. Many animals enjoy nibbling on different parts of amelanchier. Deer, moose, and rabbits browse on the stems. At least 35 species of birds eat the fruits, including cedar waxwings, mockingbirds, robins, thrushes, and Baltimore orioles, and of course some nest in the tree's branches. Squirrels and chipmunks also eat the fruit. Amelanchier are larval host plants for numerous butterflies and moths, including the eastern tiger swallowtail, shown here, the red-spotted purple, the striped hair streak, the dotted gray, the blinded and small-eyed sphinx, and the gray dagger moth. 
and Melanchior's popularity in landscaping has grown. Besides spring flowers and edible fruits, the larger species offer a shady low canopy in summer and beautiful fall color. The smooth bark and graceful limbs offer winter interest. You may be more likely to notice amelanchiers in the urban and suburban landscape, though, than you would in the forest. On the mid-Atlantic coastal plain, they tend to be spread out in the woods, offering only glimpses of the delicate flowers in the spring, but blending with the rest of the trees until fall, when their bright colors stand out again. <music>